Uh, hello, welcome hello. back again to Hot Air. Um, we did a video a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Uh, about the NJR. I yeah, hope Air everybody watched it. Air, Air Arms NJR, fan fabulous yeah. looking rifle. But you brought something today. That yeah, well, was I think the it's only fair that uh, the Air Arms NGR gets balanced with a Daystate Hunter, which is its contemporary. We've talked about the original balancing the Mark III in the 70s, and this is in the 80s was the gun that balanced the NGR, or in fact the NGR balanced this one, because this one came out Yeah, first. well I did, but I couldn't afford a, I, I couldn't afford a, a, an NGR, and, and I bought one of these. Yes, that's right. And did a, did a, a, a FT in those days. That's that was right, big, it was FT, sort of and this was the gun that started it for Daystate in FT. So this is a, a Daystate Huntsman FTR Custom. Oof. Exactly, yeah. And uh, what you've got here is a design study on the original Huntsman breech bolt, which was a big square block, uh, three eighths bolt, two parts under, usually either stainless steel or brass, um, or some, some of them are steel as well. Mm -hmm. And they needed to cut some money out of their cost because they wanted to make them more cost effective to sell. So they, they produced this rifle, which is generally nowadays known as the Mark I Huntsman. One piece cylinder, everything stuffed inside. Only recently, they stopped making guns that way. I think BSA still do. Uh, because it's a little bit fiddly to make the guns that way. And of course, when the cylinder needs testing, well, you need another gun. So now that's, nowadays they're done in two parts. But in these days, this was done to save money. Round breech block made from a bar, so yep. they didn't have to mill. They could machine and do bare minimum of milling. Um, and uh, they cut the cost down. Even so, this rifle was, what, did we decide about 500? I think it was about... Yeah, it was it was a little bit it, it was sort of high-ish end at the time, but it wasn't completely unreasonable, was yeah. it? Um, For nineteen eighty-five, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the standard FTR was around about three sixty. Yes, I think it was. So I think this was, was about a hundred pounds screen. extra. There was the FTR version, which either came with a quick filler or a match trigger, depending on what year it was. Um, and this is the FTR Custom, which doesn't come with a filler but comes with a, uh, a two-stage trigger, loosely called a match trigger. Which was trigger. a massive improvement. Exactly. Because if you don't, I don't know whether anybody ever, uh, has ever owned the Daystate with the singles, that, that single-stage trigger, trigger. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, and when you fired it, it sort of ricocheted back well, on. You could vary finger. the power by how you operated the trigger because it would drag on the hammer. Yeah. So if you if you if you were too sensitive with it, you could actually slow the hammer down. And I, in my opinion, actually, um, and, and not blowing smoke anywhere, but yeah. I think that is a fabulous trigger, even to this day. So it's... it's it's a really it, well. That's a nice link because this was a trigger given to Daystate by Barry McCraw. He was a Daystate shooter from I remember, the early I've 80s. I've spoken to Barry a few yeah. times, and he did this as a yeah. I have this, and uh, that, and the really? development of this is still being used to stay on the Huntsman. Well, well done, Barry, because yeah. I still a, I still think to trigger. this day that's still an excellent yeah. trigger. You know, right. maybe maybe a little bit fiddly to adjust. You know, the adjustments yes. weren't weren't so. Sort of, nowadays, you, everybody sort of expects the the adjustments to be easy to get to, and this one, I think, you had to take the stock off to do. You do, seer. and you can only get them so good. I have seen them where they've polished them because you adjust them, you get a certain amount of finesse. But if you polish them yeah. flat, you can get them to be That's quite spectacular. That's what we used to do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I have seen them at that match grade, but it's quite hard to, to get them. That. You've got to know what you're doing. But they do go to that. Beautiful bluing, Webley bluing again. We've yeah, just been lovely. talking about that in the last segment. Stock by custom stock. I mean, 1985 custom stock. This is an early one, what I call the Queen Anne chair front. It's got this deep snorkel tip on the front there, whereas the later ones, they've made that a little bit shorter. In fact, this is one of the few I've ever seen with this. I think only the first batch yeah, came about that. that. No, that's yep. quite, uh, quite unique. This one next interesting, a little detail on that. Um, they were hand-filed. They couldn't afford to buy the, um, the tooling to have it cast for years. So every time somebody ordered a swan neck, somebody went down the workshop with a file and a piece of bar and filed it out. Later on they had a, and you can spot the hand filed ones. In fact, I think they filed it out to a local, local jobber who just did a few. That one came out of a box, the prototype one that they used to copy. Right. So that was found and put on this gun. So there we go, that's the swan neck bolt. And they're all slightly different because they're all files. I, I, I mean, I shot one of these quite regularly and there, were, there was two little, two little things that two foibles. Yeah. One of them was, I think the recommended fill pressure was 170 bar, but if you filled them to 170 bar, they were pretty yeah, terrible. terrible. Yeah. So we actually discovered um, by lowering the pressure, I think actually, uh, uh, we were talking about this earlier, but I think I got mine down, I think it did just enough to get a field target circuit done, and I think it was 130 bar, I think we used to fill them to. 
So, you know, you had to sort of experiment a little bit to sort of see where it was best at, but mine was about 130 bar, and they did vary from gun to gun. Yeah. And the only other thing is, um, it's got that it's got that affliction of, of this, if you knocked it, yeah, it would go I, off and stay off. I, yeah, and yeah. I, re I remember, I remember practicing the hell to to go to a field target event, and I got there, and I was that confident. I thought, right, I don't need to go on the plinking range. I've got it now. And I went onto the main course, fired it, and it shot two foot to the right. And, and then we realised afterwards that this had got this had yeah. got knocked well, off got to one side. You've got three screws skating yeah. on top of a of a steel polished end cap. So yeah. if you knocked it, it they, they just moved and That's stayed right. moved. Well, to be honest with you, Air Arms S four hundreds and three tens and stuff like that, they still had that problem. Right. So you know, the best thing to do is uh, if that happens. Just undo the grub screws, allow it to settle, tighten it back up again, and the, normally it was the, back to the where the it was. The real trick was to take the grub screws out, um, take the brass support off, drill the holes deeper, because yeah. you knew where they were, because they were marked, and then put longer grub screws That's on the dirt there. Yeah. I don't know whether you... Use... The later ones, all the current ones, they have a groove, and the grub screws cut into the groove. A so, line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but what a great gun. A heavy steel tube, as you say. Mine did, I remember, I used to fill mine up at about 21 shots, to get the best consistency. Would do... Yeah, 12 seconds spread over 21 Yeah, shots. pretty good. Well, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, it was like it looked like a day state benefit gig when you went to a field target event at it one was, time because it? It, was, yeah. it was basically a row of these. Yeah, that first, my first field target competition, I think, was um, 87 in Packenden Park, and these were everywhere. Yeah. They've not, I wouldn't say they've held the value because obviously they're worth less now, but I mean, yeah. you know, you can still, they, they still sell. Yes. Um, I don't think many people, nobody uses them in serious no, competition no. anymore, but yeah. I mean, what's that? Probably about, that's probably about they're, 300, 300. Funny enough, there was worth. one in the World Field Target Championships. Last really? Year. Yeah, it was, um, uh, come on, Steve Franklin shot one, one a, a Mark one. I right. mean, not the case, but, but it was all tuned up. Good on him, yeah. good yeah. on him, fantastic. Yeah. Right, okay, well, um, we've got that. You've, uh, I, I've got a, I've got a quick, okay. I, I know everybody doesn't sort of get on with pistols on, oh, I don't know. on the There's show. There's plenty of people who follow it. Um, but we, we've just, I, I, we've got a new pistol in, um, it's called, the 1911 We The People from Six Hour. That's this one's just come out. Um, it's. Uh, oh, I've heard about uh, this one. It, it, actually, the quality of it is really nice. It's not everybody. It's not everybody's Q cup of tea. Q projectile vomiting. Yeah. You're not. You're not. Obviously not. You're I've not, seen one of these. You're not keen. No. Okay, so <laughs> it's like a usual sort of Six Hour packaging. Um, we've basically got. Uh, you actually get a Allen key with it. That is for. Uh, put it in the bottom for the CO2. Do you know what? Some people can spend half an hour in a view and we take about 30 seconds. No, we're done. Uh, 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 yeah. Well, we uh, want to be done on this one. BBs. Can we have a close up on that, please? I like it. I, I... Taste. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> that, that needs infilling with blue with white stars I, and a red slide. It does need, it, yeah. if you're going to go all out, yeah, with, a, with an eagle. Yeah. We need some, need some bald and eagles on it. you drape yourself in uh, stars and bars Well, you're reviewing it. Okay, Tony obviously doesn't like this, but <laughs> I, yeah, 17, 17 shot, BB firing only, not, not, not pellet. Um, the build quality of the gun it's itself lovely. is quite something, isn't it? Look at that. That's all got all the action of the original 1911. And including the lemon squeezer safety catch works on the back, which is right. which is really nice. So if you don't have your hand... And extra safety on there. Yep. Look at that. All the latest things. Grip safety. So that's what, sorry, that's what I call the lemon squeezer. I think that's a yeah. sort of... It's a gr grip safety. Grip so, safety, So yeah. that when you, uh, as long as you don't put the strap of your... Uh, scabbard or your holster across that and take it off. Scabbard. Yeah. How old are you? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at but, that. Uh, so 17 All shot. One of the fair. CO2 powered. Yeah. Uh, power wise, they quote 340. Uh, it's, it. Yeah, if you no. want. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, but actually, in reality, it's a little bit less. I suppose it depends on the weight of the BBs, but um, you, you're probably going to get around about the 310 foot per second area out of it. Accuracy wise, End of a tin can at around about ten or fifteen meters. Um, it's it's a it's an a fun gun really. It's yeah, a I it's guess. a close range back garden fun gun. Not everybody's cup of tea. I like it. You don't. Um, I love the engineering. I think it's not like just the the stars and. Uh, if you're gonna do it, you might as well go completely yeah, all out. 100, 179 ninety five, uh, semi automatic, and it does yeah. You haven't broken it. Actually, it, it does do that. It, 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 it does strip because does it, feel I, I, strip? it actually feels stripped like the original. Can I? If you want, let's see what happens. Let's see, if, see. It does. Yeah. Am I about to buy this? 
<laughs> hopefully. It, no, it doesn't. It does, does it? It does, it does. It says it in the instructions at field strips. Right. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't done it yet because I, I actually wanted to sell that pistol. <laughs> No, I'm not going any it, further. It, well, it, 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 it does feel straight. Okay. A competent, <laughs> a competent gun. owner would be able to do that. Um, <laughs> okay, so 179.95. Um, and also as well, do you know what? I, I, I didn't know whether to sort of mention these yet, but um, thank you. I, I'm going to mention it because John Rothery Wholesale were kind enough to send me these. And I thought it might be interesting because I wanted to test um, these trail cameras out and, and, and talk about whether they're actually going to be useful for air gunners. Uh, and funny enough, I said that to you, and you said, "Oh, yeah, they are because um, who was using them?" Well, Jerry Moss uses them uh, all over the place when he does his red squirrel, squirrel stuff. Red, the, the red squirrel people—they have these all over the place, and they're, they're watching them and they're seeing what's going into the feeders. Uh, some of them, uh, you have a, an SD card in there, and you, they go around, take the SD card out, collect them up, and then watch them. Well, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure there's loads of videos on YouTube about them, but basically, uh, this runs off eight AA batteries. Uh, it's got uh, your card in there and the nice thing is with this um, the Primos ones I don't know whether they're all the same to be honest with you but this one you can operate it without even reading the instructions because everything is clearly labeled photo video so and like every guy who has ever bought anything yeah you only read the instructions <laughs> after you've broken it that's right yeah. um, and this one this one has actually got as well a time-lapse uh, so that's the that's the button on the top. The second button down is the settings, which basically tells you how many shots it can take, how much video it takes, and there is also a delay button. And basically, you've got an off. You press that button there, and that gives you the setup options, um, which has come on there. And then the third one, which I can't see, I think is actually like a replay. No, that's just on. That's right. That's ready to go. So basically, off settings and on. Uh, I've been messing about with these. What's uh, the definition? 1080p? Uh, it yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, no. I think they've, on video, I think it's uh, it's 720. 720, right? Um, and uh, I tell you what, so far I've, I've, I've we, we've been getting videos of like of the bird feeders and stuff like that, yeah. and the dogs walking past and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I, I, I'm probably going to come back to this in another video because I want to show you some of the video, and I, I, I just haven't had the time to, to edit it all. Well, we'll, we'll ask Roger but, if he'll have a go at this, because it's a roving reporter job, well, this one, I think. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, if you're interested, guys, we'll, we, will, um, we will show these off a little bit more, and we'll put some video up and all that sort of stuff next time. But um, I, I've been really enjoying them. I think they've got a lot of other uses yeah, as well, security-wise. Security, really wise security, wise security they want to know what animals are coming on to your um, area. Who's been on your property. Who's been on your property. But I think the one I've come across is really the squirrels, where they're, where they're monitoring the feeder boxes so they can see what type of animals going near the feeder, so they can count the red squirrels, or they can see if there's greys there, or if there's... Uh, pine martins, which is the latest thing, uh, causing havoc in the countryside. So pumas? I think they're, they're going to be releasing pumas again or something. So. Well, they uh, you know, speak to people in Canuck. They think they've got one already. Don't oh, they? yeah, they do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll, 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 put, um, I'll put the prices up as well, the retail prices up in the video below. But anyway, we're, I'm going to be doing some more with these things because I think they're, they're they actually... They are great. They're really, they're really good. good. Yeah. How much uh, are they? Did you, did you, did you mention them? Um, yeah. Yeah, but I forgot. <laughs> well, that's that's part of this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're I think they're about one hundred and thirty pounds, and then there's a cheaper one. I think that's around about one hundred and ten, something right. like that. So usually, is, the more money you pay, the higher the definition and the better the camera. The the only thing I find with these is uh, I, when you're setting them up, I'd re, I'd really like a, a a viewfinder so you can line them up with what you um, what yeah. you know and I, I, and that is well, some that, of them have SD uh, some of them have uh, SIMs in them so you can monitor them live there, there's there's uh, one of the Browning ones has Wi-Fi as well yeah which is really cool because you if can get Wi-Fi zone can, yeah. no it has its yeah. own Wi-Fi so oh, you have right. your you have your tablet or your phone and you get an app yeah. and then you put you put it there and you can actually live view what it's recorded but yeah. also as well you can look at where it's looking and sort of get well, it well I do know that the, they're uh, expensive the forest rangers the squirrel rangers were having to go out and recover the SD card, or numbered of course, to each particular unit, put a new one in, and then they'd go back and watch them. 
obviously if it was live they would just do it from the comfort of their own home and see what's going on the wi-fi the wi-fi is a, it's like a short range wi-fi i think it's yeah. about 30 or 40 but how long feet. is the battery going to last with wi-fi and the camera and you know it's probably not gonna last that long I, well I, I tell you what i'd love to see one of these and i know somebody does one solar powered and wi-fi right. if it was solar powered and it recharges the batteries and you've got wi-fi on it you could just literally just walk up to it put this right up a tree or whatever yeah. so it's out of harm's well, they do way put them out the way don't they so that people can't sort of them, yeah, but know. when you want to get the SD card back, you still got to climb up the ladder. Yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, that's yeah. that's us just trundering along for no reason. But they're <laughs> they're really cool. Thank you very much, John Rotheris. Uh, we're going to be stocking these actually uh, in our shop, and I'm sure if you go to your local shop, they'll be able to get you all different brands and, and excellent specs good price actually. Yeah, they're yeah. great. They're great. I they're thought good. they were going to be more than that. Yeah. Some of them go up to about three hundred quid. Yeah. Uh, but not 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 these premium ones. They're they're yeah. cool. Uh, right. Okay. Hey, show news. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We got a little bit of news. Obviously, our sponsor is the British Shooting Show, and uh, John Allison gave me a quick call the other day and said that uh, he's got Hall Nine, so it's seven, eight, nine, uh, six, seven, eight, nine now. So he's got another nine is the size of two other halls. He uh, he was last year there were sixty new products launched. This year it's a hundred new products so far that he knows of. So a hundred products, and I know he's a long term ambition is to have an air gun hall, which is completely important for our kind of. Event, well, I, I don't. Have we ever had any show with a dedicated air gun hall before? I think we've gone to an air gun table, haven't we? I mean, it's never been anything really it's, that good. Well, sometimes yeah. it feels like it, the, yeah. the air guns have been shoved in a corner and sort of forgotten well, about Well, usually scattered and, amongst other manufacturers, but, you know, the British Shooting Show, they have everybody, so he can start to sort of cluster. That'd be great. Yeah. It'd be, ni be nice to get a dedicated hall, yeah. I think. Uh, there you go, John. You've got to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right, um, right okay, uh, uh, is that it? Well, we've got some questions and we've got... Two minutes left. Two minutes, right, okay. Um, this is good. Sorry about these glasses. Yeah. Uh, Robert Fenton, is there a place for big bore air guns in the UK? No. Right, there you go, Robert. Right, well, Licensing restrictions, 99% of the shooters in the UK shoot 12 foot pounds, 1% maybe shoot FAC. Overseas, big balls everywhere. I mean, 30 caliber, 40, 45 caliber even. I, th I, I actually don't agree. I think, I think there is a place for big ball, but it's just, a, um, it's not, we haven't taken it up. Well, uh, the, Wolverine 303 sell in this country, FX um, bosses sell in this country. You're talking about one a month, maybe. Okay. You know, it's not, it's not going to be big. So sales wise. Great gun, lovely, yeah. lovely to shoot, but in the UK, probably not. When it's the same license, for a firearm, I mean, same license for 308 as a 303 Wolverine in the UK. Have the 308, um, but you know, it, it overseas very different game. Big ball is very important over there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ken Martin asks if we can review the history of Webley air pistols. If we knew anything about them, yes. I, I know a little yeah. bit, and I've got loads of them in my shop. Oh well, there we are then. So yeah, actually, Ken, um, probably. Okay. Possibly. Probably. We'll have to get, some, get um, reading, won't we, and uh, learn about them. There's a million different types and models oh, and changes. And maybe we'll get. I tell you what, we should do. We should get somebody on the show that actually knows everything about them Absolutely. because there's, there's people. I out went there. around the Webley factory on the day it closed and saw the machinery that made the pistols. Right. We've got one minute awesome. to go. Right. So, Glideman asks if I can stop saying to be honest with you. To be honest, I don't yes. Know to be that. honest, I think it's a <laughs> habit, but I'll try. And the last question we've got from Luna Rendezvous yes. who said can you review the, the Dragon Sporter and the Fight Bow 127 the dra well, we just Parker Hail Dragon the Parker Hail the Parker oh Hale. we've got to do that well I know somebody who's got a couple of Phoenix and a Fast Fire so I think we'll balance the Dragon put the Dragon on there as well and have all three ok and the yeah. Fight Bow Sport funnily enough we've just done so, so like, we are, we're done. we'll we're, be happy about that yeah. um, ok well there's a few more bits and bobs but we haven't got time so au revoir see you soon see you soon bye bye, bye, -bye. oh we're back isn't it? We're back. Hello. We're back. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, I did, we didn't know where to call this video bonus content because we sort of made a we, well, we we didn't make a it's mistake. Not really we, a bonus for the visit. It's more of a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no. We, we were supposed to be doing like um, I don't know how many videos we're doing in a row, but we forgot we forgot a gun. Yeah. So anyway, we've got uh, we've got another review coming for you. That Aren't you can, lucky? And also as well, we've got a challenge because at the end of the last video, uh, Tony was messing about with this gun and said, said, is it field strippable, which is that the We The People 1911 from Sig Sauer. And then we obviously looked complete incompetent asses because we couldn't strip it down and yeah. you were thinking it well, wouldn't. So we, here we go, this is the... So this what is we're the, saying is that it's beautifully made, 
they yep. do the job properly. Yep. Uh, I just hate styling. But as a toy... And the challenge yeah, is, is yeah. to strip this gun down. Strip this gun down. So. It, so it can be done just to prove that it is strippable. So, yeah. so, so we should go. have had a timer. So, um, magazine out. Magazine out. Pushing, um, front pushing, barrel front pushing. pushing. Which now is actually loose enough to get out. Right. This is the problem first time now. Spring. Okay. Spring. Back against the uh, pockets first. Because it jammed up last time on the... It did, it? yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's quite... That's just a newness. It's just what it is. Yeah. Well, I suppose so, it is, isn't it? It's not like got the uh, dodgy water... Perfect bill. factory tolerances. Yeah. Oh, my God, there you go. There we go. As if by magic. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the, the 1911 We The People is strippable. Yeah, and it's quite close. It's not quite close to the original because it seems to have got a, like a browning spring in addition to the main spring, yeah. which is what threw us. Yep. Um, but there we go. And we couldn't get the barrel out because the barrel just seems to be locked in place. But that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Quite nice, isn't I it? I like that. Yeah. So, uh, we, 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 as long as we don't have spare bits left over when you finish putting it back together again, that's no, always a bad sign. No guarantees. It's certainly getting better every time. Right, right? well, I'll tell you what, while you fiddle about with that, I'll, I'll get the gun. Okay. Right, okay, so we've got the BSA. <laughs> it comes in a lovely black plastic box. Yeah, um, nice to greeny box, very beautiful, mate. It's all right, that, and uh, this is... There you go. So it comes in the box, and this is the well, fairly new, 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 new to this channel anyway, the the BSA Defiant. Okay, so this comes in um, three different versions. Shall we shift this yes, plastic box out of the way? God, grief! It's quite heavy. Whoa, isn't it? How's it done? Um, so basically, this comes in three different versions. You've got a black pepper laminate, which, in my opinion, is the is probably the nicest one. Yes. You get this. Um, Fairly bland walnut version. I've got to be honest about it. Feel great I, I, walnut, isn't it? Yeah. Feel great. Is that the that's that's the that's term. the polite yeah. uh, polite polite term for bland. brown yeah. uh, brown walnut. So yeah. we got the, the the walnut version, and they also do a black wrap, uh, wrapped soft touch. Turns out that the, the 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 black one, the soft touch one, is just like a beach stock with it wrapped. So yeah. I'm not so convinced. I'd recommend that. Because the, the, we went through this a little while back, didn't we? And I, yeah. I think the soft touch has moved on from the early days where so, it was so quite it might, easily down. It is stronger, but you can still chunk it and still see white underneath. It. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So basically, what we've got here is we've got. In fact, actually, I, I've I've watched some of the videos on this. There's a few reviews on the internet. Um, none of them. Well, actually, none of the ones I've seen have really said anything negative about it it's all been very complimentary and obviously this channel isn't like that no. so so we're going to give you some of the bad points as well so if you want to learn, if you want to see all the good points go and watch and if you own one turn off now yeah maybe yeah maybe yeah. um so basically well i'll tell you what we'll, i'll quickly run through the, i'll quickly run through the good points it's got the cocking lever is in the right place instead of a bullpup being the cocking lever on the back it's got it in this mid position yeah. which is perfect um, uh, other good points. I'm waiting. Um, I can't remember. Hold on a second. It's short, and yes. and and actually, it's got the cold forged um, BSA barrel, which is um, uh, excellent for accuracy. Um, I have actually seen some tests, and I've seen accuracy tests, and I tell you what. Joking aside, it is they are phenomenally accurate. Yeah. So you know, if, if that's your main concern, you want something short. Um, and accurate, and what's the other one? Oh, and lots of shots because this gives you. This is another weird one. I don't understand this. It gives you 110 shots in 177. Excellent. That's that's fine. I'm yeah. I'm happy with that because it's regulated. But why does it only give you 120 shots in two two? So that's 10 more shots. I don't get that. I would have thought that you would have got 20 or 30 extra shots. You would do. It just depends on the tune of the gun and how they built it. But you've got a long transfer port, haven't you? I mean, look at the height of that barrel. Compared to the yeah. valving, so you're wasting air there, so that maybe that counts against it. But it's not. But for for a, for a fairly small cylinder, I think sort of 110, 120 shots. Not much. It's. I mean, I'd expect an unregulated. This is a regulated gun. I'd expect an unregulated gun with a cylinder that length to do something close. Well, I was being kind to it. I All thought. Right. Well, I thought. I thought. Of course, you're still on your plus points, aren't you? And this yeah. is a plus point. I yeah. thought 120 shots was was quite good. Okay. It, it's got the gauge uh, at the front. Yep. Um, I think that's it. Okay. I, I, it's under a grand, just. So it's expensive. But no, I think they go over a grand, don't they, with their walnut stock? I thought this was, yeah. I think this has been sold for 900. Because right, they were originally 1100 or something, a top spec. Because I think you can get an armoured gun version as well. I, I mean, okay. to do some more research on that. Well. But maybe not. 
Uh, so, so I, let me let me have a look at it. So, let's okay. have a look at this. Well, I, I've already been I've already been messing with it quite a bit actually, yeah. and and I, I've got a few a few little negative points. Um, it is really heavy. I don't know what it weighs. What um, four point. I've weighed it, and it's uh, four point one kilograms. I didn't weigh it in, in in real money. Right. But that's about what's that? Two point two. Yeah, it's about nine pounds. So, so it, it, it's actually. I, I suppose you could say it's quite dense. Yeah. It's small, but well, quite heavy. Well, you do heavy. get elbow pups. They always are a little bit heavier, and because the weight is centralised in the mass, you, it feels heavier than it is. But that does feel heavy. It is quite heavy. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a mega mega negative point because. It, well, it in will my help opinion, you hold it on target, won't it? Exactly, yeah. it, it'll be stable. That's why it's accurate because it's it weighs a ton, so everything just stays on, stays where it's supposed to be. Yeah. But then, of course, the advantage of having a short rifle to carry around, you're also carrying around quite a lump. But it isn't a target rifle, is it? It's, no, it's, it's a, not. It's a hunting. I I, I would have yeah. liked to have seen this at least two pounds lighter. Yeah. Maybe. Um, other negatives we found um, on shooting it is um, the silencer doesn't work very well. Yes. Um, it. It looks cool, but uh, it doesn't work okay. really. I guess, um, uh, and and I, I no reason I'm, for it not. Do you know to what? Work. I'm, I'm going to have to apologize. I don't know whether to apologize to BSA. I'll just say, look, you need to sort it out because that silencer is not good enough. Um, you know, you you try a, and also as well, it's a it's it's not a thread that you can just throw it away and put a Virac silencer on. No, it's, it's, got, it's, a, got, it's got its own thread. It's got it? its own thread, which again I don't like. I think it should have a half inch of an F. Um, Nothing in there. There's well, maybe oh, is. so we got that and that, yeah. So the underneath. Oh, there, so you've got your half inch of an F adapter. You've got the half inch thread there, but you've also got a problem in the if you put a, a Varac silencer on, you're going to have this ugly gap. gap. Yeah, but that is still a um, half inch of an F thread. So it you is. You could put a Varac silencer, or indeed any other silencer on there. Yeah, but it just. I'll get something like that. It would look a bit weird because you've got this gap, and I think they should have not done that. Maybe you can get different shrouds. So that that seems to unscrew as well. So uh, I, I haven't tried to. I haven't tried to set the shroud off. This one's sold. No, no, but it, it, it's it's you know it, I don't. Are like you planning it. on selling it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I won't go any further then. But no, that that unscrews. So maybe you could just show a bare barrel. To be fair. To yeah, but it's not like it's, it's, it's not the perfect solution, is it? No, it's blued underneath. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not the perfect solution. I would have liked to have seen that shroud come forward right to the end of the barrel and have the half inch thread on. Yeah, the the, the shroud. Right. Intermount or optic holder, depending on what you want to call it. That's um, is that a BSA dovetail or is that a 11, 12 millimeter? That's just, that's just standard, standard. 11 11 and a half, eleven yeah. and a half mil dovetail. Right. Okay. Um, nice. I like the way the cocking lever flips itself out. Yeah, and then you've got a, then you've got the final bit to cock it. That's all right. I yeah. Like that. Um, the trigger isn't so three stage, is it? Off. Four, five four. stage. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not. I have. In, in I the don't. Know, do you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm worried that we've got a bad one because all the reviews I've seen on YouTube are saying that it's got a fantastic trigger, and that trigger isn't fantastic. No, it's creepy, um, and that's sort of being fairly polite, really. I, you know, it, it, you can decock it. it. Needs to be a little bit so better. Safe to than catch that. at the back. Yep. And that's a trigger block because you can feel it pushing the trigger forward. Yep. Um, very high cheap piece, Rollo cheap piece, ambidextrous. Although you've got to get your magazine in from the left. Um, I, I tell you what, I also noticed as well with it when you shot it, um, it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel right to shoot. Right. It, it I, I again I, I've not seen this mentioned on other videos, but when you fire it, it it's it's not hammer bounce, but there is a really strange. It, it seems to have a very vibration. very light hammer spring. Yeah, and so what happens is. You get a kind of a twang off that, and then you feel in the judder as the, the hammer hits the valve because it's not been driven. Right. Maybe that's because the regulator's it's very efficient or putting there's very high pressure, but it's then it's raspy, so maybe it's a low pressure regulator. It does, yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of old pre charged rifles? Yeah. Where, whereas when you fire it, the hammer's, you know, like bouncing, yeah. and it's letting out little bits of air. Yeah. So when you fire this gun, it, it doesn't go, it it's sort of like. Boing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I don't that's, like that. That rotates. That's quite nice. I've not seen that on a on a copy linkage before. No. Normally, when you do, the thing falls off. So that's the captive, so it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite good. Um, yeah. As for the styling, uh, you you tell you tell us. Does that look like a, a, a modern two thousand and eighteen rifle? Um, it, Studs on it. I I think it looks. I I, I I God Almighty! I'm like assassinating this gun, but I think it looks old. Yeah. 
I think that sort of looks like from the days of B&M I've seen better Bulldogs. stock designs than that. That's, it's sort of got the front end of an ultra type of scorpion. I don't mind thing. that bit. Yeah. It's just this bit here. Yeah. I, I suppose you could say it was a carrying handle or something, but I, yeah. I don't like that really. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that um, that's a personal opinion, isn't it? Yeah. You know, some people out there might just look at this rifle and think, oh my God, that looks absolutely gorgeous and good on you for it. Adjustable recoil pad, um, available in 177 or 22. And in stock at your dealers. Um, would I buy one? No, definitely no. not. Um, I think that I, I'm, and I'm not, I am a, I like BSAs. I like the R10. I think they did a really good job yeah, with the R10. Yeah, the R10's R10. great gun. Uh, fantastic. I don't like the, some of the spring rifles they do because yeah. I think they're made by Gamo now and the yes. quality's not quite as good as they could be. Uh, do you know what, BSA will probably never sell me any guns again after this, but there you go. Um, it's the way it goes. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it's, I think it's 150 to 200 pounds too expensive. I don't think it feels particularly nice to shoot. Yeah, I, I mean, the great scheme of things, a thousand pounds, as we were saying, is sort of getting to be a cooking price for an air gun. But for BSA, BSAs tend to be a little bit more. Well, more I mean, I've, I've, just, I've just yeah. bought my RTI Priest, and it, that was like 800 and something quid, yeah. and it's regulated. But where it, do BSA start in pre-charge? Around the 500 pound mark? Five, yeah, so the, the lower stuff, yeah. uh, like the Ultras, uh, fantastic. The Ultra Multi Shot, absolutely fantastic. The R10, fantastic. Yeah. Um, just yeah. not this. No. I Sorry, BSA, right. but we're yeah. not. Yeah, no. it's a miss. It is a bit of a miss. Yeah. Uh, and and maybe, uh, maybe actually we should reach out to BSA and ask them if we've got a dodgy one, because all the other reviews are sort of saying it's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know what that says. Maybe, maybe, maybe we are. Odd. Uh, I, in fact, actually, I'll tell you what I should do is I should maybe get another one out of the box at work and see if it's the same. But if, yeah. if they're all really, I suppose you could say that if this isn't right, then maybe they've got a quality control issue. I don't know. Uh, I yeah. think super, I've, seen, I've seen two or three of them so far and they've all been pretty much like this. Have they? Yeah. Right, okay. Well, there you go. That's a bit negative, isn't it, mm. really? But uh, sorry. Yeah. But uh, I'd rather tell the truth. Uh, uh, so, yeah, if you, if, you, if you like the look of this, go to your local shop pick it up and and maybe fire it maybe test it you know uh, and at least at least allow, you know they'll allow you to dry fire it and get an idea on the trigger and and what have you and see whether you, you think it's a good idea um i'd like to see a better silencer on it in fact actually it does tidy though it does look right it, it looks that bit looks great but yeah. at the end of the day maybe hug it do a sleeve and silencer sure they would um, which I think would be a solution, but if it's already a grand and then you add in another 150 on, yeah, for, so for, say easily, yeah. You, 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 what's it? So yeah, uh, that's very negative. Yeah. Sorry, but there you go. So that's that's the BSA Defiant. Um, uh, some good points, quite a few bad points. Um, uh, yeah, there you go. Not keen. I think mm -hmm. that's is that is that that's definitely at this time. We've definitely run out this you, time. You've actually put that back together again. It works. No, but it's over there. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure it works. So the 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 the, the, the we the people are actually they're they're in stock now. So yeah, have you broken it? No, no. It's all it's all. No, good. It won't work. But it's, it, no, mm -hmm. it's that's fine. Yeah, that's lovely. that's back that's back again. Apart from the barrel bush. It's a start. It's just. <laughs> which, you've just. Oh, I know. All right, there you go. That's yeah. Sorted. No, not sorted. Right, anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Thank Us you for watching. Two incompetent yeah. idiots talking about air guns again. Uh, we'll <laughs> see you, again we'll see you soon. <laughs> Ta da! There we are. That, that actually, that is just an incompetent issue. Yeah, because it's going to get there's lined nothing up. That, yeah, you've just got to get it lined up. Yeah, yeah so. There you go. We could put a clip in at the end saying, there you go, we fixed it. Right. <laughs> it, it, do, it, do, it does work after Third all. Third time Right, okay. Uh, I got a present. I got. I just want to tell everybody. Uh, I got a little present off the Varric Importers. Uh, and, and thank you very much, uh, Chris at Hull, for sending me this. This is like a, a tin plate. Uh, Virac HDW35 with, uh, well, it's just lovely, I think. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. We're going to put that up on the wall somewhere. Uh, and if any other anybody else has got anything like that sort of thing to send us, we'll put it up on the wall. I think that's really cool. Thank you very much. See you soon. Hi, I'm Steve from the British Shooting Show. Uh, come and see us in February next year, 2019. We'll have wider aisles, uh, more space, and a bigger and better show. Thank you.